the other day I sent a video link to Jaronism showing him that I have evidence that there's light reflecting off the moonlight. All right, so this is Jaronism's response. I wish you knew more of what you talk about. Half you got right and I agree with, half you were way off and nobody who watches the moon will know that as soon as you speak. The sun is not always above the moon. I have video of the sun near the horizon and the top of the moon lit. You say in the first night image the sun is further away and lights it up as we expect. Well why is the other half not lit? Has nothing to do with the sun further away. I agree with no stars behind the moon. I agree that the moon is not self-luminating. But a lot you said is just from your mind and not observations at all, so I didn't like the video. If you just want us to base everything off observations, then you do the same. You just stated some things you think are true, not based off observations. Alright, there's a few claims in there. My response, the apparent sun moon is inconsequential, except that it's noticeable. If that's what you're concerned with, the sun is much higher than the moon. Simple visual geometry is all I advocate for. Please state your objection more clearly. I appreciate your feedback. It's more than I get from the entire physics department of my old college. The sun lighting the moon is the point. So, I'm not sure what you disagree with. The moon is a sphere. We'll see it from the side. We'll see it from the bottom as circles. The proof is the mechanism. So, I don't understand what the disagreement could be about. If we can tell time by the moon, and no one else can, it's a done deal which I've already proven. People don't get to debate whether a clock works. I'll bet you that I can tell time by the moon alone better than you can with your cell phone in most cases. Sun is not always above the moon. This is a quote from his email. The sun is not always above the moon. I have video of the sun near the horizon and the top of the moon lit. This means the sun is above the moon. That's why the top is lit. I'm really not understanding what what you disagree with for my statement to be wrong you'd have to take a photo where the light is only on the bottom half so like that so on the left is what you see on the right is what I had to make Jaronism responds I'll find the video and show you you are wrong and I'll bet you a thousand dollars you can't tell the time from the moon better than my phone can that's ludicrous as I said, there are times when the moon is up about 60 degrees and the top is lit, the top half. And the sun is lower than the moon on the opposite sky, say 45 degrees, and yet the top of the moon is lit. This is a fact. Yeah, I mean, the top of the moon is lit. Basically, my point was that he never had an argument at all. The top of the moon is lit. I, s I said in the video that the top of the moon was lit. But the sun is always above the moon. And he said that he will bet $1,000 that I can't tell time from the moon better than my phone can. That's ludicrous. All right. Challenge accepted. So I'm looking at 11 o'clock to the south. Up in the sky, we've got almost a full moon. Uh, waning, gib waning gibbous. So, where is the sun at then? Alright, so, that right there is directly south. So it's about in the 11 o'clock position. If I look down the street, that is east. Down the street this way, it's west. So it's showing me that the sun is, it's not just north of me, it's actually um, a couple of de degrees to the east from north of me. So if I'm to draw a line to what north is from it, and then track over just a few degrees, I would say that's probably about 10 degrees from north.
we're going to find that that calculation is ex exactly right. It can't really be wrong. It's like looking at the hands of a clock. I'm going to say that it is about 2 o'clock. So there's the moon. Just go ahead and keep an eye on that. Phone says it's about 3.10 in the morning. So, well, it looks like Jaronism's right. It's 3.10, and here I'm saying it's about uh, 2 in the morning. So, yeah, I guess that's that. Oops, we forgot to confirm noon. The only way possible, by measuring when the sun is directly on your longitude. So, later that day I checked. So it's 2.15. Two fifteen, and this is the compass. And you'll see that it is noon. Finally, two fifteen, according to the phone, before Zenith is achieved at my location. That means the phone is two hours and fifteen minutes off. The blue line marks the center of the time zone only 500 miles away, so that should only account for about a half hour false reading. Spin of the Earth being 1,000 miles per hour at the equator and the Sun should be nearing the equinox on August 28th, today. It's really too bad I didn't just trust my initial reading because that was within 15 minutes of the actual time. At Jaronism, Two hours, 15 minutes off, and will be by default as long as he trusts a device over senses and scientific method. I got less than one hour and 15 minutes off. Unbelievable. Astounding. Never been done before, and you can check my results tonight. Now, we're making light of this, but it needs to be mentioned that Daniel 7.25 is well recognized as a verse about the Antichrist and the verses surrounding it. Uh, he shall speak great works against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So, this is what I want to draw your attention to. The changing of times, the changing of laws things that used to be bad, unacceptable, are now good, and acceptable, defensible. So, something to keep track of and definitely check out my book, How to Tell Time by the Moon. It is definitive. You'll gain a new skill, a skill that is just not possible with the heliocentric model. It's just not. So, as long as we can do more with our model, that's it. That's all there is to it.